Welcome to another fireside chat. Even though there is no fireplace, I think this is the third one we have done of these. The feedback has been strong, so once in a while I'll keep throwing these in here. But I wanted to address today how I use inside information within my trading. Now I'll be the first to admit, was that a little bit of a clickbait title? A little bit, but there is still a whole lot of truth that goes behind it because most people probably defaulted when they say inside information, they think the illegal sense. So am I using illegal inside information? Of course not, but I am using inside information in regards to trading and it all revolves around past history. Why am I even bringing this up? Well, once in a while, not once in a while, more than probably once in a while, I'll get a toss in my face or maybe you've had a toss in your face too. Pfft, technical analysis doesn't work and technical analysis is a use of charts. Charts don't work. Did you not know that all charts are doing is telling you what's happened, what's, or you know, what's already happened, implying things that have already happened in the past, old data, past history? We care about the future. I don't care what a stock has done. I wanna know what it's going to do. That's the key thing. That's what matters in terms of making money in the markets. And this could be the stock market, this could be the Forex market, this could be the options market, this could be the cryptocurrency market, this could be the futures, it could, any market. A lot of people will use and say that the tool of technical analysis is just totally worthless because, yeah, thanks, for, yeah, I'm glad there's a tool that's told me what's already happened to a stock. Thanks for the past data. Thanks for the old information. But I would argue that's the massive advantage that it gives you. That's where my inside information is coming from. If I can gain an edge in a situation, then that is exactly what is going to help to produce success. And I realize I'm just talking in theory right now, but at the end of the video, I'm gonna show uh, my last month's results, so that would be October. And just because I, I realize right now all I'm doing is, is talking, this is all in theory, but I'm gonna show some proof that inside information is very helpful. Or in other words, past data is very helpful. Now I talk about how can past data, how can what has already happened provide any use? Well, I'm gonna hop over to my whiteboard real quick and I wanna set up an example here where you have three people and you know there's gonna be kind of a competition that's set up with those two people. And if I do my job right, you're gonna be able to you know, guess right away who has the advantage going into the, the said competition. So let's get over to my whiteboard. So inside information, what do I mean by inside information? Well, let's just take a look at two, well, three people. It's you up here, and then you have Billy Bob, and over here you have Sam, okay? So you have Billy, Bob, and Sam. And let's say that you have a relationship, actually, let me do another color. You have a relationship with Sam, meaning you have history. And you know that if you push some sort of button, if you push another sort of button, so we'll make the triangle button. And whether it's be, you know, you, you just know how to push your button. You know, think back if you have any siblings, you know how to get your sibling. When you were growing up, you know exactly what button to press in order to get them to act a certain way. You know how they're gonna act more than likely under certain environments, you know, within certain context. You're gonna know that. How do you know that? Well, because growing up, you have quite a bit of a history with your sibling. Or in this case, you hanging out with Sam, you, I mean, you guys are buddies. You have a lot of history of just hanging out. And it's not like you don't like the guy, you just know what makes him tick. You understand if you really wanna kinda of get him going, you know, if you wanna hear him go on a good rant, then yeah, you know what buttons to start to push and you're just gonna understand his emotional makeup and how he acts. However, we have Billy Bob over here and he has no history with Sam. He doesn't have any sort of interaction. He has no history uh, with him at all. And then it becomes a competition of you versus 
Billy Bob. And the competition, am I running out of colors? I am kind of running out of colors here. We'll go back, oh, orange, I can use orange. The competition is who is going to be able to foresee certain attributes of how Sam acts. So if you two are hanging out with them, it's a competition. Hey, let's kind of see, you know, if the goal is to get Sam to act a certain way. So let's say, you know what? Let's get Sam to just lose it and go off on a tirade. Just, oh, just go off and start ranting and ranting and ranting. That's the goal. So that's the competition you want to create a rant in Sam. Who has the advantage here? Who is gonna win this battle to get Sam to go on a rant? Is it gonna be Billy Bob, who has absolutely no history at all, has no past data with Sam at all? Or is it gonna be you, who has a history, who has information on how Sam works? Again, where is this information coming from? Well, it's just coming from the past history. It's coming from the past data of you interacting with them. You have a massive, massive advantage in this competition with Billy Bob because you know how Sam operates already. You have the inside track. You have inside information. Again, where is this inside information coming from? The past history that you have spent with Sam. All right, thank you for hanging out with me at the whiteboard. Now within the situation, hopefully you're kind of seeing the parallels. Past information, what has already happened? You know, when you know how Sam has acted in the past, when you know how he has already acted, is that a guarantee of how he's gonna act again? No, there's no such thing as a guarantee. So I don't wanna sit here and mislead anybody and say that in technical analysis, the use of charts, you are like never ever wrong. You will make millions of dollars. Over I'm not saying that, nothing is perfect, but to just sit there and throw technical analysis out the window as being totally worthless and serving no perfect purpose is flat out ignorance at its best because in the scenario that I just described between you, Sam, and Billy Bob, clearly you would have the advantage over Billy Bob. Why? Because you have that inside information. Where is this inside information coming from? Well, you just simply have past history interacting with Sam. And the same exact is true whether it's a stock, whether it's uh, you know some sort of currency pairing, whether it's in the, you know any sort of market when you can gain experience, when you can gain a history with something, then you have an advantage because you know how it has acted in the past, how it tends to act, and how it probably most likely will act. Will it act that way every single time? No, there's no such thing as a guarantee. But at least you have some sort of idea over here that you can grab and form a plan around. Whereas if you're in Billy Bob's shoes, pff, Pat, I don't wanna know what's already happened. Well then where are they getting their ideas from? Oh, some guy in social media said it's gonna go up in the future. That, that's why I'm gonna buy. Oh, that's... You know, I read on a message board, or you know, I signed up for this free email newsletter, and they said that the thing was gonna just go up. And that's what I care about, it going up, because that's the future. So yeah, that's where I'm gonna come up with my idea from, is based on some newsletter. Uh, yes, I, I don't even know. No, that's not how the market works. This is how, this is why, I use technical analysis. It gives me an inside information advantage over people that either don't even know about charts yet, so hopefully they, they can now, if you're watching this video, definitely learn charts, or B, they think they're stupid, or C, they know about them, but they just are too lazy to learn about them. You know, they don't sit there and say, no, no, that, that's stupid, I'm not gonna, they just, I, I don't feel like learning about them. That's how I gain my edge. That's how many people in our trading community gain their edge, by using charts, by using the dreaded word, past information, old information, what has already happened. To me, I'll take that all day long if, if it provides an edge and it really does. Again, all theory, I realize that. So up on the screen here right now, you can see are my results from uh, October. And I'll put those down below the video too if you just wanna see the screenshot as you know it's not gonna stay up there forever. And then also I'll include just the final couple of days of last week uh, which were I think two days in November, maybe three, I can't remember. But anyways, and as you'll see, you know, if past information was just so worthless, then how did I have all green days except for one? Was that just pure luck? Was that just, you know, at best, you know, 50-50? I mean, that was a little bit better than 50-50. Now again, is every month like this? Do I only have one red? No, I mean, 
there's and there's been other you know blog posts and such where I'll show monthly results and yeah there's been red. Um, in fact, I will show just to keep it clear down below. I'll also link to uh, a, a blog article I did where I, I took a big loss because I got you know I got a little bit too big for my britches. So you know I, I titled that post "How I Ruined My Month." So I'll put that down below too, just so you know that I'm not sitting here only showing green days or anything like that. Let me talk about a loser too. You can read about that below. But the point here being is. For me, somebody that's main crutch in the market, main tool in the market, is stuff that has already happened. Seriously, that's my data point. I'm using data points about what has already happened. To have just one red day, I don't know if I would call that tool that I use to accomplish that worthless. Maybe you're saying, it's worthless unless you every single day is green. Well, okay, then, then I guess you just have much different standards and pretty high standards. But for me, the tool that I use to accomplish those results I think that's very much worth it. Now, real quick, I want to address it. That number, look at that's all you made. That's all you made. Well, first of all, let's keep things in context. I grew my account. I, uh, I think the number was 7.7 percent. So think about that. 7.7 percent. Here's a challenge, and please record it and then send it to me because it'll be funny. Walk into your bank, hand them any sort of amount of money, and say, you know what? At the end of this month, I want to have 7.7 percent more than what I have right now. They're gonna look at you with the goofy, they're gonna look at you like you're a crazy person. They're gonna, seven points, I mean, we have bank CDs that are good for six months and they'll give you like a quarter of a percent, but did you just say 7.7% in one month? Seriously, go and do that. So keep things in perspective. I am more than happy growing my account 7.7% as a part-time gig. I do not sit in front of my computer eight hours a day, every single, no, I do other stuff. If you watch the vlog, you know that you know, I invest in real estate amongst other things that are going on. So I am a part-time trader and if I can, you know, get that amount for a part-time worth of work, if you want to consider work sitting in my underwear and growing my account 7.7%, I will gladly do that. And keep in mind, I'm not even factoring in the whole math with, you know, the power of compounding and all that sort of stuff. But even tossing that to the side, 7.7% is fine. I realize that a lot of other people out there throw out numbers that are massively, massively bigger than mine. But while I'm not discounting what they're doing, you know, it just, I don't know. Some of these numbers I see, it's really, are you, are you really doing that or is that because you have a bunch of sheep in your chat room and then you buy first and then you tell all your sheep about it and then they buy and then they push up the price and then you sell and hey, you have some big number. I don't know, maybe I'm just too much of a pessimist, but uh, that's the way I look at it and that is my proof. If you don't care about the, the size then, uh, of the ultimate gain, then just at least can you acknowledge that that's still pretty impressive that every single day except one was green and that that was all accomplished by using the tool of technical analysis. I'm not saying you have to go and use charts, but for you to sit there and for people to sit there and call charts worthless and they have no use, they serve no purpose, it really is just ignorant. So that is how I use inside information. My inside information is just simply past. What has occurred and while it's not perfect, it can present the opportunity to build good logical trade plans and then let the rest you know, play out over a system and a strategy. So if you're interested in learning charts, I do offer that at claytrader.com. You can just go to the course section and check that stuff out. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have for me. And uh, But yeah, check it out. Don't listen to people that say charts are worthless, that old information is stupid, that past history has no place. That is just pure ignorance.